here we go. So I did this problem a couple of different times and I explained it different ways and I didn't really like how I explained it. So I'm making this for the third time and I know you guys only usually see a lot of my finished products, but when you make a video three times, it gets sometimes annoying to show this problem three times in a row. So I might kind of talk a little quick on this one or kind of maybe skip over some steps that I previously explained, um, but I'll try to do my best here to make sure I go through every step. So I'm looking at cosecant of x plus one and to get that off the denominator, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is multiply by the conjugate. Now, the reason why I'm gonna to wanna to multiply by the conjugate because when you multiply binomial by it times its conjugate, you produce the difference of two squares. And let me go and explain again. If I have a plus b, times its conjugate, which would be a minus b. So you have the same terms, one positive, one negative. What you produce is the difference of two squares. And that's very important because we can do this multiplication without you know, doing FOIL and writing it all out or creating a box and so forth like this. And it's important when producing the difference of two squares is because you know, by not only is it easy to factor, but then also it provides us in trigonometry something that we might need to be able to write using our trigonometric identities. So by multiplying by the conjugate, I have cosecant of x minus 1. I need to make sure that I multiply my conjugate on the denominator and on the numerator to produce equivalent fractions. Now I'm going to keep my denominator the same. I'm not going to multiply that through. And the reason why you sometimes don't always want to multiply that through, you could easily multiply through and you get, you know, you get the exact same answers. But sometimes as far as simplified version, we're going to be factoring out terms anyway. So you might want to keep them in there before and see if you can maybe cancel things out and then see if you by distributing it, you would actually simplify terms. So therefore, now I, that's my numerator. And now my denominator is just going to be cosecant squared of x minus 1. So now it's important when using trigonometry, say I see my difference of two squares is cosecant of squared of x minus 1, which is, looks very similar, similar to a Pythagorean identity, which says 1 plus cotangent squared of x equals cosecant of x. Now this is really important. There's the bell. Bye, kids. So if I want to solve for cosecant squared of x minus 1, I'll just subtract the 1 on both sides, and I get cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x minus 1. So therefore, I can rewrite cotangent squared as my denominator. Now, why do you want to do that? Because you're supposed to get rid of your denominators, right? Very good question, Mr. McLogan. That's cotangent squared of x, right? OK. So now I have cotangent squared of x. And now what we're looking at is we have a trig identity. So what happens, think about it this way. If I have 1 fourth, right, and I, and I need to get 1 fourth off the bottom, what do we do? Well, or. Let's even do something more confusing. Uh, well, let's go back to 1 fourth. I asked the question, so I might as well finish it, right? To get 1 fourth off the bottom, we can multiply by the reciprocal, right? And just multiply by there. And you're still going to have, um, uh, if you multiply by 1 fourth, 4 over 1, you're still going to have your 1 fourth, but you're not actually going to be getting it off. But let's take a look at 1 half divided by 1 fourth. Well, here you're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 4 over 1. And what happens is that's now going to um, get rid of now your denominator. So I look at a problem over here, and I say, what's the reciprocal of cotangent squared? Well, the reciprocal of cotangent squared is going to be 1 over cotangent squared, which is equal to tangent squared of x. So I'm going to multiply by tangent squared of x on your numerator and on your denominator. So therefore, what I notice is now, see, it's helpful that I didn't distribute this, because now I can just multiply tangent squared times tangent squared, which will leave me tangent to the fourth of x. A number, any number multiplied by its reciprocal is going to equal 1. And then I can just multiply that by cosecant of x minus 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you simplify or rewrite a problem without a fractional denominator. Thanks.